So my name is Brandon Gabriel. I'm from the Kwantlen Nation in Fort Langley, BC. And my ancestral name is Kualakwistan. And that comes from the ancient village of Kakate in New Westminster. Uh, I was educated at Kwantlen Polytechnic University in anthropology and marketing. And then I went and got my bachelor's degree at Emily Carr University of Art and Design in Vancouver. Um, after that time, I went to the Justice Institute of British, the Justice Institute of British Columbia, uh, where I studied Indigenous governance. And I'm actually going back to school now, and I'm taking film studies at Vancouver Film School. Um, I am part of the Stolo tribes in the Fraser Valley, and my art practice is very is varied. I'm a painter. I'm a mixed media sculptor. I'm a photographer. Um, I also uh, do illustration and graphic design and right now uh, I, I own my own company called Legacy Gabriel Concepts. Um, all, the, all the aforementioned uh, art practices is what I do in addition to interior architectural design. Uh, I have been a professional artist since I was 15, I'm now 35, so I have 20 years of professional experience. Uh, my work has been exhibited in uh, the United Kingdom, the United States, uh, across Canada, and Hong Kong. Um, my work has appeared on television. Um, I had a work uh, that, that was showcased on The Real Housewives of Vancouver. Yep, not really proud of it. But anyways, uh, I did uh, some work that was featured on that show as well as Amazing Race Canada and Supernatural. Um, so I've, I've dabbled in a little bit of that. So what does Indigenous art mean to me? Uh, to me, it, it is um, many things. Um, art is not just a pretty picture in the, on the wall. And to me, uh, for our people, it is intrinsic to understanding our language. It is intrinsic to understanding um, our songs, um, our cultural traditions, how we govern ourselves politically, and how we organize ourselves socially. Um, it is symbolic of our family's histories, um, and it's um, replete in our culture. <clears throat> Um, historical influences on my artwork, there are many, um, and it's not just relegated to uh, First Nations traditions. Um, one cannot deny the last 200 years of colonialism and how that has affected cultural production in our communities. Um, yes, I am informed by um, historic art that comes from our Stolo communities. But I am also uh, influenced by many other artists from many other nations. Um, an obvious one would be Bill Reed um, from the Haida Nation. Um, not so much the art form itself, but the role that he played in art for First Nations people. Uh, he was an important uh, catalyst for uh, the revitalization of First Nations art after um, the many uh, intrusive and um, uh, nefarious laws that the Canadian government had instituted on our people over um, a span of time. Um, and there are many contemporary uh, First Nations artists who are women who are really uh, influential in my work. Uh, Susan Point from Musqueam is one um, notable person, um, as well as uh, Deborah Sparrow, uh, Krista Point, and numerous others who are doing amazing work in our communities with the revitalization of our art forms, as well as um, teaching um, the next generations about their work. Um, I'm also influenced by some um, European uh, artists of, 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 uh, of, uh, worthy, of worthy note. Um, I love Picasso. Um, he's, uh, his work to me is, uh, was very important in understanding 20th century 
uh, art in North America and in Europe. Um, and of course, there are the classic artists that are from the Renaissance, who I'm a really, really big fan of, like Leonardo and Raphael. Um, as a practitioner of art, um, I use a number of different techniques, and it really varies depending on what, uh, what I'm doing that day. <laughs> Um, I, I'm a mixed media sculptor, so I use a number of different materials. Uh, I use wood and I use metal and I also use plexiglass. Um, all very different, uh, all very different materials which require different techniques of working. Um, in addition to that, uh, as a painter, uh, I work with acrylic and oils and um, so each one requires its own uh, methodology and how the process of it is carried out. Um, and then working with um, architectural design layouts, uh, my work is predominantly using computer models. So uh, depending on what I'm doing and what method I'm employing for whatever reasons will depend on what techniques I'm using. Um, so to say that I'm using historical methods, I think I'm working with historical ideologies using modern methods. Um, but that is to say that um, by using those methods and using those techniques in modern ways that I am not diminishing the authenticity of the work because the ideas and where it comes from and the, the history that it speaks about are the most important parts of that. So the ideology, the history and the honoring of um, ancient traditions, it doesn't matter how, it's, how you've done it or what medium you've used because you're still honoring your people and telling our stories. Uh, so interesting question about trademarks. Um, one of the, I think one of the earliest forms of, of uh, denoting place and where people come from, First Nations people along, uh, across Canada and across North America, particularly here on the west coast of British Columbia, uh, probably has some of the earliest known um, trademarks where uh, the art form very much acted like a symbol of where you come from. Um, Haida art, for instance, is very uh, unlike the work that you saw coming from Coast Salish artists. Um, and today that, that tradition continues. So if you were to think about it uh, in the, in, in, on the same terms or in the same realm of Say, for instance, the Scottish people who use tartans uh, as a way for uh, differentiating each other. Uh, the First Nations people here in Canada were, were doing the, the same thing. Um, in addition to geography playing a role in, in the separation of it, uh, the languages were also very diverse and continue to be diverse. Um, so the concept of trademark in that sense um, is very... Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, however, it, you know, uh, some of the, uh, again, I don't think we can deny the last 200 years of, of colonialism and how Western mindset and Western laws of uh, intellectual property rights have come into the foray with regards to Aboriginal art. Um, it's changed the landscape um, where the art uh, the traditions of the art are uh, held um, sort of in this communal sense. So the communities have say as to uh, how trademarks are dealt with. And at the same time, we have artists whose individual intellectual properties uh, are uh, falling in line with this colonial, uh, these colonial processes that are taking place. Uh, so it's a tricky, it's tricky waters, um, but um, I think um, there are uh, artists who that yes, there's part of it. Part of the reason for it is um, we have to um, protect our art from being devalued by people that uh, have different intentions with the work uh, because. One, uh, the sad thing about having an artwork, a type of art that is so renowned, is you get copycats. So it's really important for our communities to uphold and protect it. 
And if we're using our old systematic ways of doing it, then that is, that is great. I think that's a great way of doing it. But also using um, sort of this postmodern idea of intellectual property as a way to protect it is not a bad thing. Uh, where do I think Indigenous art is going in the future? Well, there are a number of uh, reputable and well-known uh, Native artists who have emerged in this country all who are telling their stories in ways that are really um, poignant. Um, I can name a few. Uh, Jane Ash Poitra from the Chippewa Cree Nation. There's uh, Rebecca Belmore, who's Mohawk. Um, there's Brian Youngin, who's um, from Northern British Columbia. Uh, Sonny Asu, uh, who's from uh, Cape Mudge. Uh, Marianne Nicholson, who's Kwakwakiwak. Um, the list goes on. Um, there are so many artists that come from uh, First Nations communities who are really engaging in our work in a way that is very uh, postmodern, uh, is taking a critical look at um, our place in, in this society, um, the role in which nefarious government policies have played in shaping our communities as well as how our relationship is with um, the government, with um, the various uh, uh, religions, as well as um, the, the citizenry of this country in general. Um, and, um, on, and, and what is also layered within that is also this understanding um, of our relationship to the land and the water, uh, which is always part of our stories. And so that, from that perspective, I think um, looking at where art is going, um, if our artists keep doing the work they're doing, keep asking the questions that they're asking, keep telling the stories of our people, both past and present, um, that the, the work will be as varied and as uh, beautiful and as poignant um, as it's always been. And I see it going in so many different directions. And uh, I'm proud to be part of that legacy in our communities. Thank you. Yeah.